A dark paint job has Madison leaders taking action. Why they want to make State Street a historic district. And a big day for employees at a Middleton software company as they push to move forward following a workplace shooting. There are so many people that have traveled this journey. That journey is cancer. Learn more about a new organization whose mission is to keep hope alive. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. City officials are taking steps to proclaim State Street a historic district following an incident last week. Keely Arthur joins us now with those details. Keely? Charlotte, the Landmarks Commission says this is absolutely in response to what happened last week on the 400 block of State Street, where a brick building built in the 1800s was painted black. The building, once home to the Sacred Feather Hat Store, was built in the 1800s. After coming under new ownership last week, it was painted without proper authorization. The building is now a historic is not a historic landmark rather, but the incident prompted the Landmarks Commission to consider making State Street a historic district as a way to prevent something like this from happening again. I think there's a consensus that State Street is the critical street in, in Madison and, and its architectural heritage is worth preserving and we're going to proceed uh, to do what we can to preserve it. No one can really confirm who is responsible for the black paint. The owners, tenants and painters have all pointed fingers at one another. The Landmarks Commission held a meeting tonight. No one was against the proposal, but officials say there will need to be more discussion before this gets turned over to City Council, who will need to make an official vote. Charlotte Keeley, thank you. Madison's Planning Commission is meeting right now about whether a developer can demolish two structures on East Washington Avenue to build an 11 story office building. Some residents are concerned about traffic construction and pushing out lower income families. The plan is to build a more than 200,000 square foot office space with 11 stories, almost 700 parking stalls, a nearly one acre green roof and a daycare center right next to Hotel Indigo. That's a building that local developer Kurt Brink is currently restoring. If all goes well, demolition would start around July 1st and the building would take about a year and a half to build. Let's get a check on your first alert forecast now with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Hi, Gary. Hi, Charlotte. Pretty quiet out there right now. Skies are generally clear and temperatures are dropping off as we look at weather track and see we've had uh, bright sunshine for much of the day today. Some mid and high level clouds out to the west of us, mainly staying in Minnesota and Iowa and Doppler track is free of precipitation across the entire upper Midwest, including southern Wisconsin. Low temperatures this morning started out in the middle 20s here in Madison. It was a little warmer to our southwest. A few places had temperatures around 30 degrees. High temperatures today were generally in the middle 40s, although areas closer to Lake Michigan didn't get out of the 30s and areas close to the Mississippi River got close to 50. In fact, basketball topped out at 49. Current temperatures now are in the upper 20s to the low 30s here in Madison. We're at 29 degrees. By tomorrow morning, we should be in the lower to middle 20s with clear skies. Look for sunny skies tomorrow or high temperature. A couple degrees warmer than today at 48. That's your news for now. First alert forecast. Gary, thank you. Court records are revealing more information about the relationship between the Illinois assistant state's attorney killed in Dodge County over the weekend and the Beaver Dam suspect arrested. DeKalb, Illinois County record shows Stacia Hollinshead was granted a restraining order against Ulysses Medina Espinosa in 2016. They also show the two were involved in a divorce and Hollinshead sued Medina Espinosa for child support. The DeKalb County State's Attorney's Office posted on Facebook calling Holland's Head's death the worst possible outcome of domestic violence. Beaver Dam Police say they're still investigating the relationship between the two and what led up to the homicide, which happened in a home on East 3rd Street Saturday afternoon. What we're doing with our district attorneys, he's working with the district attorney in Illinois, and we're trying to make sure that this information that we have received is factual and up to date and current information for proper charges. Beaver Dam police say the Sycamore, Illinois Police Department is now assisting with the investigation as well, and Medina Espinosa will likely appear in court within the next couple of days. Employees at a Middleton software company are moving back into their office following a workplace shooting. Paradigm posted on Facebook that the office has been repaired and remodeled since last September's workplace shooting. Four employees were shot. They are now back at work full time. Officers shot and killed the shooter. 
Paradigm used to be known as WTS Paradigm and is a software company. Seniors at Baraboo High School spent today at the Illinois Holocaust Museum as the district works to learn and grow from an incident that brought them attention and threats from across the world. The field trip comes a little more than four months after a prom photo appearing to show students giving a Nazi salute went viral online. In the months since, the school district and the community have worked together to learn and grow from that controversy. In addition to today's field trip, the district has also hosted several guest speakers and other events to speak out against hate and bring the community together. We asked the Baraboo School District for an interview about this trip. They declined, saying they are focused on serving their students, families, and community as they work to heal and grow. Lawmakers continue to react to the summary of special counsel Robert Mueller's report. The report was given to Attorney General William Barr on Friday. Barr's summary says there was no evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia during the 2016 presidential election. While the president and his team are claiming full exoneration, Democrats continue to press for the full release of the report. Whether or not you're a supporter of President Trump or not, whatever you feel, there is no good reason not to make the report public. The president said today it wouldn't bother him at all if the full Mueller report was released. The attorney best known for representing porn star Stormy Daniels was arrested today. Michael Avenatti is facing multiple federal charges, including bank and wire fraud. U.S. attorneys say he threatened Nike just last week, demanding more than $20 million in payments. They also believe he embezzled $1.6 million of a client's settlement money to pay his own expenses and debts. Avenatti could face up to 50 years in prison if convicted. Twelve people accused of facilitating a multi-million dollar college admissions scandal pleaded not guilty before a judge today. All 12 were charged with the same felony offense, conspiracy to commit racketeering, which carries up to a 20-year prison sentence. The man at the center of the scheme, a college admissions counselor named Rick Singer, has already pleaded guilty and is cooperating with prosecutors. Restaurants across the country are struggling to staff their kitchens, a problem not unusual here in Madison. In some cases, restaurants have had to limit their growth or even close because they can't find enough people to work. Some restaurants in our area have improved their benefits packages and wages to try and combat this issue. Well, after six years in business, the Middleton Hills location of Menchie's Frozen Yogurt is closing. According to a Facebook post, Menchie's will close on Sunday, March 31st. Someone bought a $2 million Powerball ticket in Racine over the weekend. The winning ticket was sold at the Speedway on Green Bay Road. The store will also receive a $40,000 payout. The next Powerball drawing is Wednesday for an estimated $750 million. It is a story you will only find right here on News 3 Now at 10. There's a need for families to have a support network to know that they're not going through this alone. Battling cancer can be lonely, be it for humans or pets, but there's a new group that's ready to fight with you. The special Do Something Good story is next.
I didn't make that promise to him once that day. I made it several times, including when he took his last breath. This is a love story. And in this love story, there is heartbreak and there is loss. But from the loss comes a fire to do something good simply because of a promise made. Good boy, Luch. For many people, dogs are their children. That's a good boy. Good girl, Llama. Their family. An undeniable truth for Beth Vinny and her Great Pyrenees Tundra, her new Famara, and her other Great Pier, Luciana. They are very bonded to their family and to those that they feel that they need to protect. And they are known as a gentle giant with a very kind soul and extremely intelligent. But there's one dog Beth remains bonded to and always will be. Zar had me at hello when I first saw him at four weeks old. Zar was Beth's first peer. He was very noble. He was very regal. He was kind. He was generous. He had a lot of um, pride. That pride especially came to light when he was part of the Pet Pals program at what was then called UW Children's Hospital, visiting the littlest patients battling big illnesses. Some of them were terminal in nature, and Zar treated them with the utmost respect and kindness. Years later, Zar faced his own battle. Those were not the words I expected to hear that day, is that your dog has bone cancer. Veterinarians amputated Zar's rear leg and began chemotherapy. 19 months after the diagnosis, Zar crossed the Rainbow Bridge, but not before Beth made him one last promise. But I promised that I would never stop fighting to help find a cure or to help other families and companion animals and dogs that had traveled this extraordinarily difficult journey. Cancer sucks and we need to find a cure. Welcome to the Czar's Promise. Five years later, Beth and other volunteers founded the nonprofit Czar's Promise. Cancer better watch out because we are working hard this committee of 15 worked so hard creating a foundation like none other in the entire country with a three-prong, all-local mission. Provide funding for canine and pediatric cancer research and offer emotional as well as financial support to families whose companion animals, dogs and cats, can't afford treatment. We see these cancers that pop up and hey, gosh, they're the same cancers that people get. Dr. Shu is treating Candy, who has lymphoma. She'll be receiving her second round of chemo, thanks to Zar's promise. It was a big burden off of us, I guess. That was our biggest concern, was the financial part, because it's expensive for this. Oh, we're oh, super grateful. So grateful for it. Candy's in remission, living beyond what was initially expected without any interventions. If you believe in them, they can believe in themselves. If you don't give them hope, they can't have hope in themselves. And Zar's promise is about inspiring hope. Hope for more time, hope for more memories, hope for a cure. Cancer sucks, I know, but that doesn't mean we can't fight. A promise made, a promise kept, with Zar leading that fight from the other side of the Rainbow Bridge. He was a confidant, he was a trusted companion, he was uh, a one in a million for sure. Beth and all of you fabulous founding committee members, thank you for doing something good. And Zar Buddy, thanks for your leadership. You are so missed. If you would like to help Zar's promise and its mission, sign up for the inaugural Inspiring Hope Dog Walk. It's on Saturday, May 11th at Winnequa Park in Monona from 10 to 2. This is a family and dog friendly event. For more information and to register, go to czarspromise.com. If you know of a person, business, or organization who's doing something good, let me know. Fill out a nomination at channel3000.com slash do dash something dash good.
Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us once again with a look at your forecast. A lot of people out walking their dogs tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather is pretty quiet. It was a little chilly, but I mean, the dogs, they certainly didn't oh, mind. No. It's good to be out, you know, finally get rid of a lot of the snow. And as we take a look at the snow cover, it's left across the Midwest. Most of that is confined to the northern part of the state, uh, into northern Minnesota and northern portions of North Dakota and northern Michigan. Here in southern Wisconsin, there are a few piles of snow left up from where the uh, snow is piled up by the snow plows, but but other than that, it is pretty much gone. And on Doppler track, we're not adding anything to it. We've been uh, very quiet precipitation-wise, which is good news. We need some more dry weather. High temperatures today range from around 40 or just a little bit above in the northern part of the state. Mid-40s here. Notice near Lake Michigan, temperatures stayed in the 30s, even as far south as Milwaukee, thanks to a lake breeze there. But you move inland, La Crosse is close to 50 degrees, and temperatures were around 50 through much of Iowa. Current temperatures have dropped back into the uh, 30s for the most part over much of southern Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Madison now down to 29 degrees. Uh, temperatures also around 30 in the northern portion of the state. The live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Skies are mostly clear tonight. It's chilly, but not overly cold. 44 the high for today. The low temperature 24, just a little bit below normal. And right now our temperature is 29. Skies are mostly clear. The air is calm, so there's no wind chill to speak of. The jet stream pattern continues to start moving northward. We're getting into a more spring-like weather pattern. We notice that the storm systems, instead of being close to the Hawaiian Islands, are getting up now into the Gulf of Alaska and heading toward uh, western Canada. Uh, this one storm system that, where the jet stream buckles here is bringing some precipitation into the northwestern part of the country. That will bring us a chance of rain on Friday, maybe mixing with snow Friday night into Saturday, but temperature should stay at or above freezing, so I'm not looking at any snow accumulations. In the short term, our weather pretty quiet. These showers here are fizzling out. Uh, we'll have to wait till the thicker clouds farther out to the west move in here for tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. High pressure located just to our north, just giving us very light winds out of the northeast, keeping our temperatures cold. High temperatures today, mid-40s here, just a little bit below normal, but notice the large area of 50s to our south and to our west, even a low 60 over parts of southwestern Kansas. Current temperatures are still into the 40s to around 50 over Kansas into Missouri. Uh, 30s and 20s through the northern portion of the Midwest. Not anything overly cold, which is good news. Uh, the future track computer model forecast shows lots of sunshine for tomorrow. Uh, clear skies for tomorrow night with temperatures a little bit warmer because the winds will be coming out of the south. So that high pressure system heads off to the east and then those southerly winds really kick in on Wednesday. It'll become windy with high temperatures up around 60 degrees. Wednesday night into Thursday, the clouds will thicken up. Might see a stray shower, but for the most part, the better chances for rain will stay to our south. Uh, low temperatures tomorrow morning will drop into the lower 20s. High temperatures tomorrow should be up into the upper 40s. Low temperatures tomorrow night dropping into the lower 30s. And then on uh, Friday or on Wednesday, look for those high temperatures to be up around 60 degrees. Forecast calls for skies to be mostly clear for tonight. Low temperature will drop to 22 degrees. And then for tomorrow, look for a mostly sunny day or high temperature topping out at 48. On future track, clear skies tonight. Those temperatures dropping off to the lower 20s by tomorrow morning, but they should warm up pretty quickly. A few degrees warmer than today, upper 40s to around 50 degrees in most areas. Tomorrow night, look for skies to be uh, mostly cloud or mostly clear with a few clouds late in the low of about 30. And then again, those strong southerly winds kicking in for Wednesday. That brings the high temperature up to around 60 degrees. Seven day forecast, you'll see a chance for a shower from Wednesday night into Thursday. Better chances for rain on Friday that can mix with some snow Friday night before ending on Saturday. Then dry weather for much of next week before a chance of a shower or thunderstorm toward the end of the week. But high temperatures by then will be up around 60 degrees. So that is a spring-like forecast. Oh, liking that. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. The Kohl Center is a great place for a big celebration tonight. That story is coming up in sports.
Yesterday, the Badger women's hockey team won its fifth national title with a 2-0 win against Minnesota in Hamden, Connecticut. Tonight, they celebrated at the Kohl Center. The Badgers have played in the Frozen Four the last six years, but hadn't won a title since 2011. That changed yesterday as the Badgers beat their biggest rivals, the Gophers. Melissa Kim has more from the Kohl Center on tonight's women's hockey celebration. Well, halfway through the regular season, Annie Pankowski and Sophia Shaver told us that those battle scars from playing Ohio State were going to help them in the long run. And a few months later, overcoming that adversity paid off. Pankowski! To be able to peak at the right time is so important in our sport. And facing that adversity taught us so many lessons for us as a team, just um, off the ice and on the ice. And we're so happy we got to go through that because that just made us stronger going into the final games. We learned a lot about how important it was for this team to get up early and, and how much uh, momentum we really could grab from, from that first goal. And, and for this team, it was huge to, to do that. This national championship especially meaningful for this senior class. We were talking before that last game. We were like, we are not going to leave anything on this ice. We're going to give it 110 percent. We're going to give it all we've got because that's all we've got left, right? Like, that's our last game here at Wisconsin. This senior class has really left a legacy, and that's really all you can ask for coming into it. such an amazing program like this. You look at the little girls who've been impacted by that, and, and certainly I've dreamed of it, and I know my teammates have dreamed of leaving a legacy like that where little kids come to the rink wearing your jersey and and to see them watch us hold this trophy, I mean, I, I'm sure we've ignited a spark in a lot of them, and, and that's something special that uh, can never be taken away. Now, that sentiment of inspiring future generations of female athletes also shared by three-time NCAA champion swimmer Beta Nelson. We caught up with the Verona native, and we'll have her story tomorrow night. At the Cole Center, Melissa Kim, News 3 Now Sports. Badger football has its first spring practice tomorrow. Paul Chris says all four quarterbacks will get plenty of reps this spring as they figure out what's next after Alex Hornibrook's departure. In your mind, if you're trying to see who's going to be the starter out of spring, then you better give them more snaps early, right? You got to narrow it all down quicker. And, and we don't have to do that right now. Opening week is here for the Brewers. They'll play the Cardinals at Miller Park Thursday afternoon at 1:10 to open the 2019 season. Tonight and tomorrow, the Brewers are playing their final two preseason games against the Toronto Blue Jays in Montreal. Jays have a 2-1 lead tonight in the fourth, but not anymore. The Brewers' new catcher, Yasmani Grandal, two-run homer. Brewers up 3-2. Top of the fifth, Travis Shaw has an 0-2 count, but he gets a high fastball and mashes it. Three-run homer to extend the lead. Final score, Brewers 10, Jays 5. The first game of the 2019 NFL season will feature the Packers at the Bears Thursday, September 5th. It'll be the 199th meeting between the Packers and the Bears. It'll be the first game of next season, which is the 100th season for the National Football League. Usually the Super Bowl champions play on that first Thursday, but the Patriots won't play until that Sunday night. And we'll be right back. After week one, giving up the winning touchdown. Get what?
Did I hear you correctly? My Cardinals are playing. Your Cardinals are playing. Good luck to them. No, yes, there, I know. They do are, need some luck. There are many of you around here, you know. I know. Yeah. So. I know. It's bold. They start the season against the Brewers. They end yeah. the season against the Cubs. Mm. So, Gary, come on. Gary, what he thinks about the Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> the Cubs fan. No comment. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll comment on the weather. Pretty quiet out there right now. 29 the current temperature in Madison. Skies are generally clear. Look for temperatures to climb to around 60 by Wednesday and Thursday. Maybe a shower chance then. Better chances for rain on Friday, mixing with snow before ending Saturday. And then a warm up next week. Temperatures around 60 by the end of the week. All right, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.